I'm just making a video today um, about the equipment I carried on my um, attempted run, self-supported run around Wales. It's all self-supported means that I carried all my own equipment and stuff like that during the journey. Um, I hope you enjoy. For a sleeping bag, I used this, I don't quite know how to say it, I, uh, Kucho sleeping bag. It's their light 700 version. Um, I think it's about four, 540 grams, something like that. Um, it's a synthetic bag over down, and the reason I went for this is just because we live in Wales and it's wet a lot. I um, use the Rab Alpine Bivy. Um, it's not the lightest Bivy bag ever, but it is the best. And that's what I kind of wanted to be able to not get too much condensation. There's a zip that runs, so right the way around the top third of the Bivy bag. Um, and then at the bottom is a really big foot box. You, I could kick all my equipment down to there in the night if it was raining. Um, if I was gonna do it again, I think what I'm looking at the moment, I think it's the Halo um, bivy bag. So that's got um, one little pole in it um, and a fly sheet. So that was the only thing with this is when it was raining, I had to be completely zipped in, which just meant I was breathing a lot of condensation. So I ended up doing was propping a stick under one corner having the door open just enough so I could breathe out so I wasn't filling the, the bivy bag with condensation. The mat I used uh, to sleep on is just this sort of super thin, fairly dense foam stuff. Um, I didn't pick it because it had the silver back on it, it was just the thinnest foam mat I could find and the lightest one. Um, I also used this in my bag then um, to sort of give it a bit of support so the bag isn't collapsing all the time. All my equipment just went into this sort of Palm Ultralight 20 litre bag. Um, it's just a dry bag. It's got a roll top on it. So just when anything in there, then we're staying dry. This is the final part of my sleeping system. It is a uh, C to Summit Eros pillow. And it's just super lightweight and a bit of comfort. Really nice pillow and just packs down to nothing. This is my sort of toilet and washing bag. Um, it's stored in like a little freezer bag. I use these quite a lot just because they're really lightweight, quite cheap and um, waterproof as well. So I had a little deuce number two, 17 gram little trowel to be able to dig a hole if I needed to. Some toilet paper. I had this wilderness wash by Sea to Summit. So I use that for um, washing myself and also um, pans and stuff. And then like a little cloth. This is uh, my kind of first aid kit. Um, another thing in another freezer bag again. Um, I've got KT tape, which is like a, an adhesive tape that's really good for covering wounds and also any sort of um, injuries and stuff that can help support it. Same thing with this stuff. Um, it's vet wrapped, it's like a waterproof sort of wrapping stuff. They use it on um, horses and things like that. Um, first aid stuff, a big strip of plasters, a pair of toenail scissors. I also carried a, a nail file as well, um, and that was just to make sure if I did get any split nails or anything bad like that, I could just fire it in a tough bit of patches of skin. Um, a mini toothpaste. This is my kind of miniature toothbrush that I cut the end off. Some Savlon antiseptic cream for any cuts or anything I had. And then a small tub of um, suntan cream. This is my um, electronics bag uh, in a freezer bag again, just to make sure I keep everything waterproof. In here I had, I think it's, which is it? 16, 1600 amp hour battery pack. It was absolutely awful. Um, I should get a new one of these. I think I, I kind of killed the batteries a bit when I took it up um, to Afincagra and it got frozen one night. Um, so that's a lesson. I've got a head torch, Petzl Bindi. Really nice and lightweight. Um, rechargeable. So I don't need to carry any batteries for that. Um, I've got um, headphones so I could listen to some tunes along the way. A little adapter so I can charge and listen to my phone at the same time. I've got charging cable, uh, 
that's got different sort of ports on it. A little adapter then for my phone, uh, not for my phone, for my um, watch I was wearing, my GPS watch. I had a little spot live tracker for people to follow along the route, so there's that. And then a set of four batteries as well, the spare batteries. It's my um, cooking pot, uh, 650 millilitres. Um, I'd actually attach the lid to it using this rubber band. Uh, inside there then, I've got a lighter. Um, I've got a little decathlon folding spoke that locks into place. A little cloth for washing my pan up. And then like a little gas bottle there. This is the actual burner. Just packs down into into nothing really. And all fits nicely inside the pot. For water, um, I carried two of the the, well, the two raid um, light flasks that came with the the running bag. Um, they're really good, 600 millilit millilitres, uh, a little bit more, Most usually they're about 500, um, so that extra sort of 200 mils you can carry is really nice. Um, and then I was also carrying a 2 litre platypus um, bladder, just because it's light and folds up into nothing again. Um, I tend to fill this up in the evenings, or if there were long sections where I wouldn't be able to collect any water um, from a tap or anything for, you know, five or six hours, then I could take an extra 2 litres in that and refill those bottles so I could drink from them as I was running and I had spare. And the final um, things I was carrying was this little pouch here. So in it I printed off uh, little markers, checkpoints along the way, so just telling me um, where the next sort of village or town or important place was, how far it was to it, and then my overall distance so far, and then I could kind of check them off as I was going. So you can see I'd sort of done one and a little bit, and then I'll start with section A, there's section B, section D, C and section D there. So I definitely still have quite a way to go. The other electronics were just a Garmin FX watch like I um, mentioned about, and my whole Huawei phone. Um, so that's what I'll just get any pictures and videos with. The shoes I used um, were these Ultra I can't remember what they're called, they've got like a big thick sole, but they're definitely a, more of a road running shoe. You can see I still use these to walk the dog and stuff, so they're it's filthy. Um, I think next time I'll go for, they, I've found Ultra do something similar, like a really big soled shoe that's got um, designed more for like trail running and things, so I think they'd be better. Um, and then sock wise, I had these silly ma hilly marathons, so I had. Um, two pairs of them um, to wear while I was running. Um, I have a pair of these Asics, uh, they're really nice, they're kind of like a compression sock um, that I'd wear in the night. And then I did have a set of Sea to Summit waterproof socks as well, so I'd wear these um, if it was a really damp morning or a wet day. And something I wore every day then um, are these calf sleeves, so like compression tights really, just for your lower legs while I was running, just to kind of hopefully um, look after my muscles a bit better. Um, I had two pairs of compression shorts. I had this just um, Salomon S-Lab something or another and then a set of um, skins as well. And then what that just meant is I could um, wear a fresh set every day and then I could wash one set in the evening and then put them on the outside of my bag to dry for the next day. Um, over the shorts then I just wear a pair of just you know, super cheap, lightweight running shorts. Um, I did carry with me as well a set of full length um, leggings. These are just some carry more ones, just quite lightweight again. And that was just in case I came, I had a particularly wet or cold few days, I had an extra layer for my legs. I also had a pair of um, icebreaker pants, um, just some merino wool pants. Um, and I'd kind of change into these in the night then, so I was just sleeping in those and just meant I could get out of the sort of sweaty, smelly clothes I'd been wearing in the day. I had um, I had two um, 
synthetic sort of lightweight running t-shirts. You know, I'd wear it's the same thing with the shorts then, I was swapping those, so I was wearing one one day and then swapping, um, washing one one night and swapping again, just so I could kind of try and keep on top of the hygiene. I also carried a um, an Alp kit, uh, merino wool, sort of long sleeve top as well, um, just so I had something warm to wear. And then also a decathlon fleece as well. Just one of those, it's really nice, like cheap, but really warm piece of kit. And it's super lightweight. I carried a decathlon um, down jacket, hooded down jacket with a zip on it. And then for waterproofs, I had a, um, a pair of on, can't quite remember they call this, they're like their lightest weight. Um, so I think it's like 150 grams for the coat and the trousers. So I'm not sure how well they just stu stood up in a big storm. Um, but they're definitely really good. I still use them for running now. I carried a buff um, just to be able to use a hat. I had um, a pair of gloves. Um, they're uh, another decathlon buy. Um, they're a really nice lightweight glove. It's also got like a mitten rain cover on them. So that was really good. Um, I carried uh, arm sleeves and this was mainly just to keep the sun off. Um, I was quite lucky I had them really. It was like a super hot. A uh, little couple of days, um, some sunglasses, and then just the classic Patagonia hat. This was the um, Raid Light 25 bag I was using. Uh, the way I'd pack it, I'd get my palm dry bag and I'd put that in the bottom. Um, I was using my roll mat um, as like a, a back frame for the bag because this bag is there's nothing to it, it's all just fabric. It just makes it a bit more comfortable to carry, um, especially because I was moving for, you know, 12, 14, maybe 16 hours a day. I would then start filling stuff in my bag. Um, I tended to put the things that I didn't need until the end of the day at the bottom, really. So my sleeping bag is usually one of the first things that goes in. It's really good because it um, fills a lot of the empty space at the bottom and makes sure you haven't got any gaps um, in the bottom of the bag. I then put things like my down jacket in. Um, any clothes I knew I didn't need for the day, so like if it was going to be a nice day, I knew I wouldn't need my gloves or my buff. Um, I wouldn't need any waterproof socks. I wouldn't need my leggings. Just those kind of those type of things would get stuffed into the bottom of the bag. Then next. Any t-shirts and things like that that I didn't need for the day that were dry would also just get stuffed in. My pillow, that wouldn't be needed until the end of the day. Uh, my bivy bag, so this is just a giant waterproof sack really. Um, I never put this inside of my dry bag. Uh, just because it's probably a bit damp, even though it might not feel it, it's still going to have moisture off the floor where it's been sat on the floor overnight with me inside it, or um, or from dew in the morning. So what I tend to do is just roll that up and then kind of stuff it down in between my dry bag and my rucksack then. Um, the next kind of thing to go in would be stuff like my electronics, if I didn't need them for the day. Um, I'd leave my tracker out and I'd strap that out to the side of my bag so it got some good signal. First aid kit type things, those would tend to go towards the top of my bag so I can get them out quickly if I need it. And this is all still going inside um, my dry bag. <clears throat> Next would be things um, that I'd want during the day, so stuff like an extra layer um, waterproofs, because we still are in Wales, or I still was in Wales, so that's always really not handy to have towards the top of your bag. And any food and things like that as well. The key with these kind of bags is uh, just to roll them over and squash any air out.
And then on top of the dry bag, then that's where my waterproofs would go. Um, these would kind of be the clothes I'd wear for the day. So I'd have a t-shirt, a pair of shorts, um, a pair of over shorts, some socks, calf sleeves, my hat, a pair of sunglasses. I'd have my phone in a pocket of my bag and my watch on my wrist. I'd then pack like, my water bottle, nice and easy to get to, so if I wanted to fill it up quickly, I can, and I can get moving again. Um, my arm sleeves would go in the top of the bag as well, and this one's really cool, just to save a bit of extra weight, it's just like a Velcro tab, same as a dry bag really, you just squash the air out and roll it over, and just clip it onto the shoulder straps. What I've got here then are a load of bungees. They're really cool. You can just change wherever you want them to come from, run to and clip together and stuff. So you can have all sorts of different setups. This is what height I have, so I could easily hang a, a t-shirt or a pair of socks on the outside of my bag and try and drive them during the day. It's also got this giant pocket that runs around the bottom of it. So that's where I put things like my um, poo kit my toilet bag and wash bag and things like that would go in there. My little GPS tracker, I'd clip it to my bag and then just tuck it in the top of there so it would get signal. I flip the bag over. This is a bit different to like your normal type of rucksack. It's like a vest. So in the front then there's um, a pocket each side for your water. And then all that is, is it just kind of helps spread the weight out a little bit. So I'd have one water bottle on each side. I then tuck um, my card with some cash and my little points for the day so I knew how far it until I got to the next sort of village or town in there. I also had a little bottle of hand sanitizer as well tucked into one of these. And then you've also got these zippy pockets so I'd have sun cream in one of them. Uh, maybe a mobile phone, stuff like that. And this was my bag packed and ready to go. Um, it came out at 4.2 kilos and that's excluding food and water. Um, so depending on how much water I was carrying, I generally just carry 1.2 litres, which is these two full, these two front bottles full. Um, and then like I was saying, if I do longer sections, then I'd fill up that two litre platypus. Um, so I could be carrying three and a half litres, or three points, what would it be? 3.2 litres of water, um, which is 3.2 kilos, which is quite heavy actually. Um, it almost doubles the weight of the bag. And then food on top of that as well, you know, I could double the weight of my bag quite easily. The reason I went for the 25 is that like, there's a lot of room still left in it. And it just meant that I could pack in more food and stuff if I had some longer legs. Um, I think for the future, um, but next time round, I think I'd get rid of a couple of items, things like the down jacket. Um, I probably lighten up the sleeping bag. I'd probably stay with synthetic over down just because it's still warm enough when it's um, damp and wet, which happened quite a lot really. Um, I'd change the bivy bag, I think. Um, I've been looking at some and I'll be looking again like a lighter weight, slightly, like designed for something, so like designed for this type of stuff, really. Um, but apart from that, really, I think that's kind of about it. So here you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you want any advice or want to know anything else on the equipment or what I use or how I pack bags or anything like that, or planning or anything, just, um, yeah, message or comment. Thanks, bye.